in late game, but at the same time, like what you said, Lina, Gyro. The question is, is Lina too weak to deal with like an Ice Blast, Primal Roar, and yeah. all that? So like, you need the Io for the save. Yeah. Io Sand King can save though. They've got a lot. They've got slows. They've got stuns, and they've got Io to reduce the damage. They ban the Underlord, so offlaner being looked for for Secret most likely. As uh, OG, they're looking for their safe lane to get off, most likely, of course. It's, it's uh, the Paranoid with Io. Could go there. Yeah. Because Io with Underlord, like, Underlord, the problem with him usually is he's just this slow moving truck. But if you get hit by a truck, like, any speed, that's going to hurt. Yeah. Wisp brings you in. Could you imagine the uh, relocate in, the Dark Rift out? Yep. And then just everybody's gone. Taxi service, man. It's like there and back. Return ticket. Your connection's here, and see. Well, speaking of uh, things that move fast, disappear in the blink of an eye, the Lycan does get banned out. That would actually fit OG's lineup really well, so that's smartly fought. I mean, Beastmaster's pushing, Lashrak's pushing. Last thing you want is a Lycan pushing as well. And look at this right now. Off lane wise, I don't know if they want a Brewmaster here. That feels a bit risky. Park, yes. Even more control. No, this is as clearly well the for the Rapid Fire Dream Court level 25. <laughs> Dude, that, 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 that talent is hilarious. I've actually seen a few, um, a few players, especially in like, the tier 2 scene, they keep doing like, the right-click orientated build. I saw it twice, once it didn't work, and the second time it actually was... Oh, sorry. Cancel was the funniest one to do, because we kept oh, saying, like, me and my analyst kept saying, he's not gonna, he's not gonna go right-click. And he kept taking right-click talents, and he kept taking right-click items, and then suddenly killed the whole team with a rapid fire. But... What is this word that you speak of? But I'm wondering where they're actually going to go with OG. So you just see the Puck come out. You need someone that can handle a pretty hard right clicker because it should be Puck off lane. Yeah, it's most likely Puck off lane, Gyrocopter safe lane, Lena mid, sinking four. I was thinking, could a Jug work here? No, Jug will get shredded. Would he? Faces Faces void. Faces void. I'm, hey, I don't even combo. know. I don't That's know. better than Jug because Jug, the right clicks mm. from Puck, you can't actually hit him. If you try and Omni-Slash, it works against you because immediately you're just going to phase shift. There's a lot of ways to deal with Especially seeing as Lena's going to build yours, you've got Sandstorm. Think of all the elements that wouldn't have worked for Jug. I think it's the right that they went for the Void. It's a much, much better pick. I don't know how much I like the Void, though. Um, you know, you've got Puck to Illusory Orb through. You've got the Sand King that can go with the Epicenter into the Chronosphere. I just don't... Puck's really hard to catch, though. Yeah. Really hard. Yeah, and you do need something like a Chronosphere. And to just kinda... That's the kind of offlane you want. Someone that can uh, kind of dodge out a lot of the incoming problems. and. I'll tell you what, that Lena pick, man. That Lena pick was so hot that I felt it here in the studio. Yeah, you had to take off that jacket, show those... I think those are muscles of some sort. But, Thanks, uh, I, I think. Yeah, yeah. A little bit crazy. Don't rip the shirt. Just, you know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel I'm going to incredible bulk anytime soon. But, no, looking at those drafts, who is your favorite to win this one? I, surprisingly, maybe not surprisingly, I like OG. I'm, I'm a fan. Gonna go with secrets. Io, powerful man. It's I mean, first time we're split. It's the first time. Maybe this is the end of our relationship. It could be, and I actually think it is. I think it is. It ends right here. As, I'm uh, done. Goodbye. All right. See. Ya. So we're gonna be getting into this game three in just a moment. I personally like the OG draft. It's one apiece. Obviously, going into this game three, secret took game one. OG took game two. I think this game is closer, though, than the first two games. Because the first game was all secret, second game was all OG. I think this yeah. game has the potential to be that barn burner, that, like, amazing back and forth that we just haven't really seen throughout the first two games. OG were really smart with this draft. That final pick was really, really smart. Like, they could went so wrong. Like, Chaos Knight looked decent, but there were ways to deal with them, especially Gyro, plus Lina. You could have looked towards someone like the Jug, but like we said, the mistakes against the Puck is obvious. And the thing is, what you had as in the problem for OG is the later you went, the worse it got, because the Shrak's eventually going to become less powerful against BKB users, mm -hmm. and the eye reducing damage. The Void completely flips that. The Void says, if this goes late, Secret better be worried. And well, Secret might be worried right now, as OG has smoked up and moving towards the top. They might walk into Io, but this is not the right target. He gives Teva. I shards through. Yapsa needs to stand his ground. His core is not there. They don't land the stun, though, and Yapsa will not be able to escape. First blood does occur. As <laughs> Sanking was nowhere nearby. 
Yeah, Sand King not near enough. Puppy nowhere near to get that tether going. I think OG at level 6, though, for a couple of these heroes, they will find a power spike that I don't know if Secret will be able to fully deal with. Yeah. You've got, uh, obviously, the Void with the Chronosphere. A Shrak at level 6 is one of those heroes that does quite nicely. But maybe that's not his power spike. But I'm also worried about the Beastmaster, where you've got the Primal Roar to work with. But you also got down these wards. So the trade was you did get the first blood, but you got a very interesting ward out. Secret did. So they're really paranoid about their safe lane, so they put that ward near the secret shop, which, I mean, maybe it's just because they're team secret, but we don't really see that position often. Usually you'll put it close to the tower, you'll put it in the obvious ward spot for some from some of my expected first two-minute ganks. But I like this. And it looks like OG, they like tri-lanes. You've got an ancient apparition. You should be running a tri-lane here. It's yeah, a the, very good setup. The question is how long does it last, because we know that Jerex likes to move around a lot. Hey, if he's getting kills, he's happy. And S4... First mid one, this mid lane should be pretty even, especially once you start putting points in the lightning storm. Especially if you keep hitting stuns like that. Here's the thing, mid one has to walk close with the light strike array, so he's quite predictable. Whereas the Shrak, like if you're in the river at all, you can do it from very far away. So if you haven't got ward vision in a great place. It should actually just cover most of it, but if you push in a little bit, there's an easy way for him to uh, get stun off without being seen. I think Jerex is going to stick here till he gets level 2. You get that level 2, you get the snowballs as well as the shards. They can line that up with those Shrak over mid. With how squishy mid one is, I yeah. think early on, that's your aggressive endpoint. And that's what you're going to be looking for for Jerex. But oh, mid one, nice is dodge. A little bit low as mid one does dodge that stun. He's got to just be careful about just letting Lena come in too close. Well, Lena hits a lot harder. So if you don't actually hit that stun, you can't trade. Yeah. You just have to back away each time. And then that creates space for mid one. I mean, look, he's basically just getting attack speed while hitting you up the Dragon Slave. It's favorable for him. Looks as though up top. It, there's definitely OG want to go lane. in, but the you comp. have the tether out. You have the burrow strike to lead with. Think about it like this. You want to jump on the gyro, but he wants someone to jump on him. If you don't jump on him, it's free. You can't do anything. And if you do, there's a Sand King that's going to stun you all. And an Io to just stop any huge damage you do. And the bot lane we finally got over to, because this one has been the one nothing's happened in that's noticeable so far. But you have to respect the fact that, yes, Void hits hard. How do you reach a puck? Yeah, you just... Both of them do have their escape. But I feel like as the Void, you're maybe not getting the I'm advantage here. Yeah, it. there's the Illusory Orb as well as the Jaunt on over. Trying to get, get the, the space with off. Void. He's getting low and will end up falling. Yeah, that was very aggressive play, using the Illusory Orb, getting him into a spot where he didn't have that time walk and jaunting on over, getting him so he couldn't run back to his tower and getting that kill. It's the positioning and the ward top. So what this allowed Secret to see is the support location for OG. Mm -hmm. And that meant the supports they wanted to TP respond, but they were too close to Puppy. If they tried, I would have as you stun, interrupt, and you still get the first blood bot and maybe get a kill top. So they are able to push back this Wisp, but again, he's got the tether, he's got the region, he should be quite fine as S4 is equal with mid one at the moment, which I would say as the Shrek is quite nice because the Lina can take advantage of this lane pretty quickly. He's had to go for the ball though, because he really needs to spam out spells, whereas yeah. mid one's just happy to right click exchange. So there's more pressure on S4 to control the runes to actually stay competitive in this lane. Surprised Jarex hasn't actually gone over just yet, especially with the bottle where you do have the mana to throw out those spells. It you're does also, give an opportunity for Jarex to go out. You're also kind of seeing an issue top. Because you're running a tri lane with a Beastmaster, you need to actually be right clicking a lot to get the value out because all you're doing is starving Beast of valuable XP that you could be putting into those axes. Yeah. And I think if Jarex left, it would be pretty beneficial for them. Again. The ice shards come through. There's the Burrow Strike. It'll land on the Jarex, but they want to continue Snowball. to go on forward. They've got the Snowball. They pull in too. Fly continuing to move with the they Cold Feet on him. Puppy gets over for a moment, but the turn will come on OG. Ace continues on forward to fly. If they could just find the Burrow Strike, they could get the kill. But with it being level one, there's just not enough range. I mean, you saw it, right? That's the IO effect. They were all about like half HP, and they got one member of secret half HP. That's not good enough. And I think OG know this. There's going to be a point that they're just going to have to abandon this lane and let Beastmaster catch up, look for kills elsewhere. But by the time we're doing that, mid one's about to hit six. When he hits six, he's going to take someone with him every time. Tusk can maybe dodge with the snowball, but that's a very situational scenario when his Tusk actually like standing right next to a teammate up against a light striker Ray Lina. Again, with Jerex having to stick up top like that and S4 getting low, he's 
pushed all the way out of, out of lane to the point where he's walking back, all the way back. So this is an open opportunity for Lina to hit level six yeah. and then have that Laguna Blade be ready to roll. Maybe they send the Sand King over there, get a stun, get a Laguna Blade, as well as the Light Strike Array. And look at the last of difference this building. The deny is actually quite big as well. Like. Reaching level six isn't the biggest deal for the Shrak, it's a big deal for Le uh, Lena, as we already said. Yep. Look at that, he just came back, half HP, straight away, one hit. He doesn't actually do as much harass if he lands his stun as the Lena now does. And No Tail's not really farming that, well, he's farming well, but he's not, he's burning through all the regen he has. He's actually gone for the headdress first. Uh, well, mid. Mid one actually dies there, so S4 did land the stun. Surprisingly enough, with Shrak, who is so low to probably start that engagement. Like, if he hits the stun, he has a chance, but I don't think, like, it feels like it's the ward vision. Like, you look mid, the wards are gone now. So you, we said before, right, like, Lina has to get closer to stun, but Shrak can do it from blind spots. As soon as those wards expire, you're good to go. And this was really well read by S4. Like, you look at the time, it's night time, you're five and a half minutes in the game, this is probably when the wards have disappeared. Yeah, and he was able to take advantage, like you said, and they do get that kill on the Lena, which is really good for them, and now Lena is level 6, but ooh, over top, tether to the creeps, the Absor out of there. But ooh, bottom, they'll get the kill on a no tail. they send Puppy over with Fada, they drop the Dream Coil, you see S4 coming over, it lands the stun, and mid one dead again! So we thought level 6 was going to be so nice for Lena, and it doesn't end up working out his way, Puck getting a little bit low as well. And S4 might just cross him at the pass. He's up on the high ground. I don't think Fada knows this. If S4 could just get the vision, Fada might be in a little bit of trouble. He's coming on over towards the stairs. And there's the stun. There's the kill. S4. Perfect, perfect positioning. Him on top, Ace wants to move in. Stun from Puppy, he goes across an Ace to Apparition. Will Sandstorm up, but they do see him. The cold V, Puppy has no escape from this. Can Jerax be killed in return? Ace taking a lot of damage, but he needs to rock a barrage back. If he does not kill Jerax, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Backs away. There's a snowball, they're chasing in, they're gonna go under tower, but it's the big one from Ace. Colby goes out and now they can turn, Jarek's gonna die to the tower, they do get the kill on the gyro though. Two for one exchange, and I was about to say before this even happened, it feels like Secret need to bail on this lane. They are starting to feel this point where Beastmaster's getting a few points in the Whirling Axes, and uh, not Whirling Axes, and he's also getting the Aura. So now he can actually be more aggressive, and when you're stacking the way that Secret are, the damage adds up pretty quick. Yeah, they were able to take advantage of that. They reinitiated, and I didn't know if that was going to go so well because it was under the tier one tower. He had healed up with the wand, and they still got that kill. I was really surprised. Absolutely, and I think it's a case if you look at this, where you're standing now, well, where you're standing in the mid lane is not where you want to be. Mid one gets caught again. The shards plus the stun, but look at that. Finally, Yapso is here to save him. Mid one, could he go for a return kill? He needs to be careful. They know this vision on the high ground due to that lightning storm, but that's what they needed. Right? This is what we're saying, they need to rotate these supports, because when they do, mid one survives that. And by the time S4 realizes this, he's probably too deep to survive, and they're going to look to make him pay, because Poppy is on standby right now. Actually, they, they brought Puck around as well. This is a really big kill for them. They think there's a lot in this. Lose your old crew. Oh boy, they They've got the, dream, the coil. dream coils. They control him, S4. Oh, doesn't actually use the stun, actually bases it out. Fada silence up on S4. There's the Laguna. Now let's turn around to Jarex as well. The snowball through Fada. He'll be fine. Move away. Jarex getting super low. He needs to keep running, but the Dragon Slave one hit from Puppy will do it. Can he get the ice shards? Perfectly blocked. He'll move away. Puppy barely surviving. Same with Jarex. And I mean, we said this was his hero. It was amazing. Fantastic. The creeps, the timing. Like, do you think you could pull that off in an instance like that? Go creeps. Power, ice shots. I mean, personally, me, give me 10,000 chances. I mess it up every single time because I'm just not that good. Rewind, rewind, rewind. Yeah, I would be. It's like attempting a situation in a video game. You just retry until I get it right, and I would never pass it. I, it's just, Jerex always seems to just amaze me. I'm fanboying again, but it's just like plays like that where I understand maybe that wasn't the best situation for them, but to get himself out is a little bit more important than just like they just got uh, the, the little spin. He's got the Helm of Dominate creep. So uh, that's a little bit awkward. <laughs> 200 gold does go the way of secret there. And they're just kind of using, right now they're just kind of using that creep to scout. But it's an expensive unit to scout with. You've got a Beastmaster. He, just, yeah. he hasn't actually leveled to call the wild yet. And this, I feels like, it feels like it's actually hurting them as a result of that. Because now that you're using Helm of Dominate creeps to scout. You're giving up a lot of gold, yep. potentially. 
So they've put fire oh, on bottom. Cool. There's the dream coil on to no tail. I don't think it's going to turn into anything. They've got the centaur around here. You could see Yaps who are looking to move forward. But the time walk out. I was going to say the half fire. Ooh, illusory orb. They might actually just go for this. Fada being aggressive oh, no. again. There's the chronosphere. Centaur looks like he's in it. And now oh, they'll no. continue on forward. There's the snowball as well as the split earth. They'll kill off Fada. They'll look for Yaps or two kills go the way of OG. So Yapsa had his calculator out. And he's like, yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Migration, reduce, reduction damage, regen, we're good. Uh, he didn't see a Disco Pony, though. There was a surprise there, and it wasn't one they liked. S4 was very quick to react to that. And they have no wards in the bot lane, so they couldn't have known that was coming. No one in the mid lane, no one to A. Side shards will block him in. There's S4 getting another kill. He'll actually wait for Lina. She comes in mid one, gets stunned. This is not where you want to be. The cold feet coming out as well. Look at the light strike array. He needs to move away, but we froze on the spot. S4 just ready to finish up that kill. Double kill. And this Lashrak is getting out of control right now. Yeah, with the help of Fly, Ice Beats Fire, they take up the Lina. Dead for 23 seconds. Now they've got the Burrow Strike, Waning Rift, as well as the Illusory Orb to take at least one in Jerax. It's a consolation prize. But still, OG up 4,000 net worth, finding kills all over the map at the moment. This is uh, this is rough because you're finding those little kills, but where's the kill on the Shrek? You got him one, sure, but he's getting so many more kills. And it costs you a lot to get that one kill. I think they sent, what, four heroes over to get one kill onto S4 with this little Shrek? Yeah, absolutely. Like, they haven't invested so much just to shut him down. And now they've rotated Ace in the mid lane, like, Lena needs to recover, but do you think your gyro is going to fare much better against the, the magic damage of the Shrek? Now they've got the Ice Blast ready for Flies. He's level 6. They'll throw the homie missile over. Up top, Wild Axe is thrown out. Poppy, Poppy. has to just run from his home in the trees. Nope. <laughs> that is not where you want to be anymore, especially with Jarex coming over. I mean, you know, this is just like, this is a, this should just be a race statistically to see who cuts more trees, like, across all games being played between Beastmaster and Timbersaw. Another one of those compendium. A race. Questions. How yes. many trees get cut in this game? It was oh, a puppy. fine puppy over bottom. He's got the sandstorm, but here come the ice shards. You can't just stay and wait, puppy. Oh, Burrow no. Strike's going to come up a little bit short. Mad continues to move on forward with the Primal Roar. There's the snowball. They'll get the kill. Dream Cool has dropped down onto Mad, and it will just snap. And that will be him giving up his life. Worth it. Beastmaster was getting way too much gold. Look at him. Second highest in terms of net worth. You just gave your life for a post 5 Sand King that is... Not exactly feeling very rich right now, just 2k net worth. He's actually poorer than the ancient apparition in S4. Oh, Ace, he gets caught out. Look how quickly he dies. The war is punched there to ensure it, and the home missile hit S1 in the face, but it's level 1. He doesn't really care about that. This man is just everywhere. Still able to disco after getting hit with a missile in the face. Like, did you not see his position there? He knew he was coming. He's like, Ace is just going to come down here. He's looking for a bruise. And that's the second time he's had positioning like that, where he knows they're coming my way. And he did it once with the puck, and now he'll do it with the uh, gyrocopter. So he gets both those kills. And it's Lushrak moving around a lot. Top hero level. I, I mean, he has put himself so far ahead at the moment. Mm -hmm. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And Gyro's actually only level 6. He's so far behind. This is what happens when you try lanes. The thing is, they left Beastmaster alone. They never left the gyrocopter alone. Chrono coming out. There's the ice blast as well. Goes straight, and Lena's gonna die again. And now Puppy, control up. He can't save anyone, but can he even save himself. The dream call from Puck can achieve enough. Io is here. They need to find at least one kill. They'll find one in eight apparition. They need to follow up under this void. No tell. He gets a time walk away. He will live. Ice shards through. They might turn on the Puppy because Io is left with his comrade. In the meantime, Yapsra actually dies off to Mad in the top lane. Yeah, they relocated over top to try and just get this puck out, but they end up losing their life. They might lose the puck as well. He's getting chased by Med. There's the bottle, heals up a little bit. Now Med, the one who needs to be on the run, is the Illusory Orb, is a little bit short. They've got the Split Earth onto the Gyrocopter, getting the kill over there, still over top. They run after this Beastmaster. Fada continuing to move on forward to try and kill Med. They've got Lena nearby, but look at this Beastmaster just able to walk away. I'm pretty sure Secret are like, just every moment not, not being harassed, they're kind of like drawing straws to see who has to go across. And look at this puppy. He does, he beats the Ripper. Barely. He's like, Sandstorm, I've got 25 more seconds. I can wait, wait this out. I don't have to leave. I think Jerex was trying for the, uh, he snowballed to the Ancients. He was yeah. trying to snowball over the Sand enough. King. And I don't if, think that was If he actually spot. drew them out, maybe, but he's worried that there would be a bar strike if he'd done that. And I mean, Bloodstone already on yeah, this four. It's pretty quick. Like I said, that, that mid lane is just everyone's drawing straws. Like, who has to go here and die a few times? When is it going to be Puck's turn? Puck would probably do a better job of handling that lane than anyone else. 
But it's not even a lane anymore. You've lost your tier one. They're done. And now they're going to head towards the top and look for your tier one there as well. This is a 6k net worth lead and you're 14 minutes in the game. We said OG have to be quick off the mark. And the hero to be worried about is Lashraken. Look at that. Top net worth. All three of their cores. Lashrak leading the way. Yeah, and he's okay. Where we thought Lena was going to be much stronger come level six, and and I thought Lena was actually going to take an advantage in that lane. Look at where mid one is compared to S four at this moment. Forty two hundred net worth compared to a seventy seven hundred net worth with Shrak. Seven thousand net worth lead here for OG. It's things are just working out perfectly for them. They're moving around the map in the right ways. OG yeah. are really putting it together right now. I'm very impressed. It's how they read the lane, the supports, the way they read it. So. Secret supports felt they need to stay longer than OGs did. And you remember I said, like, if OG commits to this too long, it's going to be risky. They start rotating. Oh, wow. They try to go in That's with the Chronos right There's the split Earth. He's trying to run. The Prime War was off the camera, but now they look as the Chronosphere comes in on the puck. They lock him in, continuing to move on forward. The Silence comes out onto this Faceless Void. They'll already lose Puppy. Mid one drops as well. They'll lose Fada, and three are gone on Secret, but mid one's here. So now OG continuing to chase. They'll look for the kill. The Sun comes out. Jerex with the Ice Shards as well as the Snowball. They get four on the side of Secret, and OG are cleaning up. Fantastically done by OG, the way they came in on the side. And Bada, he looks so tanky in that chrono, but immediately I was like, I'll save you, dude. You got to lose your orb, escape. Nope. Lose your orb was used just before the chrono. He was still waiting for it to come off cooldown. And now you're going to lose a tier three and 60 minutes in the game. You're basically getting distracted at this point. Beast Master there as well. Look at the speed at which they attack. They'll take the tower, move away, get the shrine, and then probably go straight for the Roche pit. Wow. OG just with the Dive Rock Edict, with the attack speed from Beastmaster, these fights going their way every single time. I mean, they're using their ultimates perfectly. It, I just, OG looks so good right now. And it's not that it's Secret is a bad team or anything, because they're certainly not. They're definitely just this amazing squad, but OG with this draft has overpowered a team that is so good. And it's impressive from OG. Man, at this point, I don't know if I want to just get you drunk and when you pass out, get you an OG tattoo on your back, or if I just want to get a giant, like, back-sized picture of Jerax, right? Just just an OG tattoo right on my forehead. And Jerax on your back. And just the Jerax haircut, too. Like, all of a sudden, people are like, are you trying to beat Jerax? What's going on? But it just, it's hard not to... you, you got respect for the fact that OG are playing this well. Yeah. And Jerax is... Like, this is one of those guys that when you pass him a tusk, He's going to do a lot of work with it. Oh, yeah. And it just... A game played this perfectly it is, to me, exciting. To me, to be able to see a team really put it together is great. And they're doing it against a team like Secret, which... Isn't easy. People would say prob is not easy by any measure. It's that mid lane. Like, there's another example of a game that is being decisively decided by that mid lane, right? And I think the turnaround for Secret has to be Sand King and Puck. Like, when you got your blinks ready, you're good to go. But Sand King's not going to have a blink for so... Oh, wait, no. He's up to 1,900 gold. He's been he's been farming. He's been catching up. I'm, I respect this. This is how you should play the boss 5 Sand King. You kind of have to sacrifice to get where you got to get. Nice blast time. top. Mid one drops to no tail. Did use that Chronosphere. Locks in the Lina, but with no Lina for 40 Lashrak. seconds, here comes Lashrak. Dive out Edict. You've got Yules. Uh, you've got Mad coming in. There's the Split Earth that lands with the Yules. The Burrow Strike does get out from Puppy, but your Tier 3 is going to start dropping real quick, just like it did over top. But look at this. Park's not even back. Father, I don't think he actually has a TP. He's coming around the back, maybe looking for a backstab, but Tusk is already there to meet him. Jarex is going to keep an eye on him, make sure he can't get that initiation. They're going to lose another Tier 3. And OG just back again. They've got an Aegis. They can just reset and go again. If they find Fada, oh, the Yules are waiting for it to come down the split up. He dodges it out. Can they actually follow this up though, Fada? Just trying to move away. The Primal Roars, he moves through. The Ice Blast stun from Puppy to stop the initiation. But Fada, he may already be dead. He gets the Dream Call to free. He's going to fall. Ace chasing on him as well. S4 once more. The Light Striker right hits the Laguna, but that's only getting rid of the Aegis. Yaps all in a little trouble as well. They'll move away. Yaps on mid one, they need to have a miraculous hold here. They're going to lose at least one Rax at this rate because there's four, top five heroes in your base. OG, they are not going to leave anytime soon. Yaps or just being held up to make sure he can't reach it up and they move straight up to the top lane, stun through. Puppy just trying to escape. You're going to lose so much of your base here, but they can't take the whole thing. Tier two is still standing in the bot lane. I think maybe realistically they could just go tier fours. That might not be OG's plan right now. It's disrespectful. But you don't want to do that. Nobody's got buyback here. But every cent is now available for tanking. 
But nobody's got buyback here for Secret. You and still don't risk it. Just one poor fight from Secret, and I guess that's just the game. Yeah, but you want to risk going the other way. I don't think they can take it the other way. You're up so much, you can't take a risk like this. You've got the snowball coming in. Ani Absor goes Yapsor. over the top of Puppy. Doesn't go long enough to get themselves the kill on the Wisp, but they will take out this Sand King. Gone for 32 go seconds without buyback. They can go tier fours now. Sand King, like, if they want to go tier fours, they can. They've got 30 seconds, they'll get at least one. Sand King is the concern factor because, like I said, he just hit that six. Very close to that blank. That's why they're a little bit worried. But they're going to respect it. They'll back up. The Aegis is no longer with them. So, t they're pretty tanky. You maybe get one, but what do you give in return with a, with a Park, a Gyro, and a Lina there? Don't know if you even give up that much. They're just that far behind. you got to remember how much gold these heroes are worth. So, just one or two dying is actually a big deal right now. Because Secret, if they get one or two items, they could bounce back. Their, their lineup is very situated around the mid game. So, 25 to 7. OG of 18,000 net worth and secret. Pretty much corralled in where, they, yes, they can leave their base, but it's not going to feel like you're safe by any means. And, and OG with one more fight could just finish off the game and secret know that. They need to find farm where they can and, and take these high risk farming plays. Yeah, exactly. And it's not like, it's, I don't think it's the end of the world because you do have a gyro. If you get a few minutes breathing space and you get a big item on gyro with an IO as well. You could potentially turn this. It's just when the the ultis are up, as well as the, just the chronosphere available, as well as the primal roar. They need BKBs. Even with another item for Gyrocopter, he's only level nine. Yeah, it's like Ace Run because now they smoked up OG. Oh, there's the... They get two. The Chrono. They're gonna go straight in. I had a lot of trouble. They'll go straight face. They'll kill both of them off. Double kill for Ace Will chase through the fire. Lose your way. GG gets called. Secret. They tap out. And the final game of the series, 21 minutes long, 19,000. Network bleed. Wow. You did not see that coming. I didn't see it coming that quickly. Every game has been quite one-sided in uh, in one way or another. It was, like I said, one-sided for Secret when they won, but both games that...